are you feeling yeah so you're here so welcome and um, i hope everyone is feeling nice this afternoon is it afternoon or evening in it right afternoon or evening how do you call it yeah so uh, i just want to tell everyone everyone uh, who will be joining very soon uh, welcome and uh, today we we'll be having a very awesome conversation about our katiba sindio so my name is nelmon yusong i'm a recording performing artist uh, i'm also today uh, playing a role of our mc uh, so now I, i just just before we get into the whole conversation i want to welcome mufasa uh, with a piece uh, and then we'll uh, get to jump into it karibu sana mufasa thank you i see you i see you uh, hi everyone my name is mufasa i am a poet uh i'm tempted to do a piece that i haven't done in a long time like one that i did my past past poems that were very pa- personal uh so this is this is called let me not even give you the title my pastor says it is hard to raise a child today especially in a world where aladdin is a thief sleeping beauty is lazy batman drives an automobile at 320 kilometers per hour and cinderella is a young girl who comes home past midnight my pastor says parents should not punish their children while in rage uh uh-uh, uh they should calm down first then administer punishment when they are relaxed i wish my pastor had talked to my mother before i was born <laughs> the way i was raised my parents said i love you by paying school fees my parents were not obligated to offer you friendship although they were friendly just as here and there like when my mother called me daddy or when my father asked mukula the first time i carried packed lunch to school my mother packed for me bread and tea that morning as i watched my mother pour hot tea into a plastic tin which was to carry the tea in my mother's words were bas mtoto kunyo say moto jule the truth that my mother could have shared mm, in that moment eh, was the fact that plastic tin doesn't keep hot tea hot that day in school i had bread with iced tea Now, this was different because this was iced it's not nice <laughs> i normally tell myself that that before my daughter is born her mother will be 3 then 5 then 9 months pregnant i will have nine names for her her mother will refuse five but man i will hold on to four before my daughter learns to walk i will carry her every day from here to there she will not need muscles to do the same for me because every time she smiles or laughs i will be moved i don't know if my daughter will be dark or light skinned I wouldn't choose her mother by her skin color. I'm into deep stuff because the sound of our heartbeats together will be louder than the sound of our skin tone. But in case my daughter complains about being dark, I will tell her not to worry. I'm paying school fees for her to be bright. And she won't be my star, no. She will be more than that. She will be my sight. She will make me see the reason why even with the fat tummy I should strive and be a role model for her so I will stick my hands in clay and role models for her I will be Icarus for her I will fly to the sun for her she will not see me cry because I will not let her I will make sure her eyes stick on my wings immediately she notices that I can fly and I will stick up there until her eyes are off me and when she's 16 and in school man I will teach my hands to wave so I can enjoy saying goodbye when I have to and i hope she will learn i hope she will learn in this world education is key but with dignity humility and respect you have a bunch of keys i hope she will learn beauty is engraved on the soul that's where things like forever come from i hope she will learn to be there when the world needs her so i hope she will fight not her neighbors but fight those things that will make her and her neighbors to fight i hope she will be hard from more than one mic stands I hope she would need request to tell her the devil is a lie. I hope the man who melts her heart will be there when it solidifies. I know she will test her tears, but I hope her smiles will be sweet enough. I hope she will go places further than Mahatma Gandhi with his eyes closed. I hope the beats for my heart will be enough to make her my song, my song, my song, my song. Ooh. And when she's 16 and when she's old enough, I will tell her I know how it feels like to 
feel alone. I will tell her behind those photos of me dressed in Dolce and Gabbana, others nights I slept on one banana. <laughs> I will tell her sometimes life breaks you and heaven is not an option because you lack the strength to go on your knees, but I will tell her never to give up on God. I will tell her your failures, your failures will not describe who you are. I will tell her she rocks my wall like 60 kilograms of stone, like a thousand kilograms of stone. I will tell her that she's my backbone. So if her mother carried her for nine months, I will carry her in me until it feels like I have a soul inside my soul. And when she's old enough, I will tell her, I wrote something about her way, way before she was born. And I made all of you witnesses. Thank you. Uh, I believe when poets come from off stage, people do this. No. I don't know, Mufasa, why do people do that? Why do people, instead of clapping, they, they, they snap their fingers? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, welcome. And uh, this is Katiba at 11. Last year we were saying Katiba Miyakakumi. Yeah. And uh, what do you call 10 years? Transitangaji? Eh? Zinezanga decade. Ndio? So now CG 11 zinezangaji? 10 plus 1. So welcome. And uh, so this is to be able to have an awesome conversation. Ndio? Tutabonga about Katiba. So welcome everyone uh, who is here today. And uh, I want to welcome Jackie. Um, she'll be a moderator for today. So I don't know how we welcome her. Sindio? Yeah? So um, can you give a microphone to Jackie? She has a mic. OK. Um, and everyone who is already starting to watch, welcome. This is Katiba at 11. At 30, at 40, at 50. This is the even numbers. I'm going to say 10. So right now, Fony and Mina a story. And we know, of course, there are so many things that we can be able to celebrate about our constitution. And of course, there are so many other things that people have tried to make sure that we don't celebrate because they've tried by all means to make sure that they are either not implemented, or even if even if we ask for them. They decide to deny them to us. So today we're hoping to have that conversation. And uh, I want to welcome Jackie. Jackie Karibu Sana. Unakimbia. Yeah. So welcome Jackie and uh, yeah, sanitize, sanitize. Kuna mutu wana semanga hivu, wana mujo? Eh. Pane kwa YouTube channel. Wana semanga? Sanitize. Ina funguli yangu waje? Na hii brande yao ndiyo ina, ina pea wiyo mutu oh, ya shara. Sorry. Oh, ni hiyo. Hiyo mtu. Na mwana tuna. I hope wa, wa, wana support. The, I think nilikuwa ni mejibebea kitu ya in case such a thing happens. <laughs> Good <laughs> evening. <laughs> yeah. Okay, karibu sana. Good evening to all of you and our friends and partners who are joining us online. Uh, we are celebrating Katiba at 11 tonight, or is it this evening? And you're welcome to this event. Uh, so we'll basically have a discussion, not really anything structured, to just do a reflection on what we've been able to achieve, how do we do things differently, and what are the prospects of the constitution moving forward. So I'll invite my panelists on stage, uh, two gentlemen and two ladies, we start from Mr. Kiprono Dimas. <laughs> Mwalimu Mutemi. And the lovely ladies Nerima and Bina. Yeah. 
So, uh, Boni, uh, so this event is brought to you by Boni Media. Uh, we've been illustrating the constitution of Kenya in graphic format. Uh, we are not showcasing our, our work today, but I'll definitely uh, tag it online so that you can follow it. Uh, we've done a number of uh, Mtani events with uh, some of you. Nelmo, we've been to your hood. We've been to Mwikali's hood. Uh, I think she's back here, and uh, Dimas has moved with us, so I think I'll start with him in terms of, do you think we've achieved much with the constitution and uh, awareness creation and public participation as far as our project is concerned, and how then do you think we can do things differently? Uh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> yes, uh, I think... Uh, the constitutional journey in Kenya is bittersweet, but it's mostly sweet. Um, if you have been paying attention to the Court of Appeal case, the, the other case, the High Court case uh, regarding uh, the constitution and amending it, it's, it is clear that this constitution was meant to be transformative. It was meant to imagine a better Kenya where people, people's rights, where the structures of governance, uh, where um, um, the, the sovereignty of the people is protected uh, uh, by those who with the trusted governance uh, and by all of us, uh, um, to, um, if you extend that. Uh, but there have always been those people who are, who are not comfortable with the new constitutional order. Um, the constitution greatly reduced the presidential and executive powers. They greatly um, devolved resources. And so um, there were people who, uh, from the onset, always felt like power should rest somewhere else. And they've been uh, a constant onslaught on the constitution. Um, if you think about it, ever since 2010, we've had constitutional commissions created. Uh, we've had... Um, um, uh, the judiciary getting so, mu so many powers, uh, getting independence from the executive. Um, and uh, you'd find that, that uh, this, uh, these powers that were removed from the executive, the executive has been trying to claw back. And let me give you an example. Uh, the constitution envisaged uh, total devolution and envisaged that the pro provincial administration would be restructured in a way that would allow the governor, I mean, the governors and the devolved units to work. However, what we saw was that they changed the names of the units in the provincial administration mm -hmm. and ensured that it retained its powers. The National Police Service was supposed to create something called county policing authorities, uh, where the, the governor would be a chair and it would create sort of a mechanism in which counties can participate in the security mechanism of that, uh, of that area and all other areas in Kenya. But uh, you'd find that that part of the constitution was never given life. Uh, so we, we have it in the National Police Service Act, but we don't have it in reality. Uh, we had very robust constitutional commissions uh, that were meant to professionally take over certain powers that uh, Kenyans had found to be, to have been abused by the state in the, in the past. So we had a commission for human rights. Uh, we had a commission for elections um, and, so, and, and so on and so forth. But after the first uh, recruitment of commissioners and then they, they got out of office, the new uh, round of commissioners were recruited in such a way that uh, you could call some of them Trojan horses where they were sent uh, by, the, by the state basically to destabilize uh, those very commissions. And one commission, for example, the National Police Service Commission actually uh, did not protest when BBI proposed that it, it should be abolished. The head of that commission was like, oh, okay, that's, that's okay, we are building bridges. 
Uh, and so that, that was another way. Another way is underfunding bodies that are supposed to uh, carry out uh, certain um, functions. And another way that the clawback happened is uh, uh, causing constitutional amendments and also um, legislative amendments. There have been so many attempts to ensure that the president is the one that appoints the chief justice uh, and courts uh, and, and even judges where people suggest that JSC does interviews and then forward certain names and then the, the president can, can, um, can cherry pick which one he wants. But uh, the beauty about this constitution is our ability to go to court, our ability to go to the constitutional courts and say that certain parts of the law are being violated, my rights are being violated, it has to stop. And that is one of the transformative things that came with this, with, under this constitution, whereby anyone had the locus, which, which means legal standing, to approach the courts, and then the courts would listen to you. And where if you look at the law, you can even send a letter to the constitutional court registrar, and they'll reduce it into a petition. Uh, so this is a, these are the things that we need to know. And the powers of the courts is one of the hallmarks of basically uh, uh, our experience for these 11 years, where the courts have stood up and told the government, no, you can't do this. And uh, that has happened. So it's a bittersweet uh, experience, uh, but uh, all in all, we celebrate it because it, it, has, it has life, it has a spirit. Uh, and Justice Kiage made sure to hammer, hammer it down last, last week when they were reading the Court of Appeal judgment that uh, this constitution is aspirational. It embodies uh, our wishes for ourselves and no one can, uh, can usurp that power. No one can create, uh, um, can, can create a, a body or create a situation where by a few people sit down and decide that this is the future that we want for Kenyans. Uh, it's Kenyans have to be there, left, right, and center. They have to be, they have to be um, consulted. They have to give their views. Their views has to have to have to be taken down, uh, and so on and so forth. So uh, let me leave it at that uh, at this point. Thank you. <laughs> Nerima, kindly give us your reflection. <laughs> um, after he's already elaborately spoken, <laughs> um, you cannot have the same reflections as him. <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> um, so, hey, everyone. So, I think my reflections, what I would say is. For me, what I see in terms of the gains is how important process is, yeah? So the first time, well, when we saw the annulment, um, that was unheard of anywhere in the world. But a lot of us know they said that the issue was irregularities um, within the process. And that's what we're hearing with the BBI appeal, where they talked again about the process have to log in and, and i think process is important especially for african countries because a lot of times what happens is presidents change term limits and they change term limits quickly and they do it without the involvement of the people and they normally push parliament to do that so we saw the way bbi the way parliament was pushed the way guys if they refuse to support bbi you are kicked out truly speaking. So we saw that happen to James Orengo, and we also saw that happen to Amolo, Atendi Amolo. So it shows you that they remove you from positions of power within the party. But the constitution came and protected itself. So I think Kenyans need to celebrate that because process takes a long time because what this must talked about, the involvement of the people, it takes a long time. By the time you have traveled to the different counties, meeting with different groups of people, so by the time everyone has heard about this thing and they're able to say, I agree or I disagree, a lot of politicians don't want that. And a lot of presidents definitely don't want that. So that's what I would say 
is a big win for Kenya. And I've had a number of people saying from different countries, in fact, that if only our constitution like, was like the Kenyan one. Because another one that I see is um, the Indians. Indians, their constitution also is similar in a sense in terms of a lot of the readings, the court rulings that they get, they copy us or we learn from them. And there was something very interesting where in India, they really believe in the environment and protecting the environment and animals. In Kenya, we believe in tourism and we say that tourism brings a lot of money to our country, but do we really protect our animals that much? But imagine Kwakatiba, there's a whole line for environment. They don't even have it in India. So even when we talk about youth, there are people, there are countries that don't even have youth within the constitution, but in Kenya, we do. So almost everyone in every aspect is touched. And, and I think at the same time, it's so advanced that not even European countries have a constitution like ours. It's more advanced than we understand or we even realize. And I believe that's where now the civic education comes in because we don't teach the constitution in school. We don't. And we need to even not the whole thing, as in that document is long, it is long. And it can also be difficult, but there are certain articles that we should care about, including the Bill of Rights, which is your right to live, association, freedom of expression, the things that you do every day, you should know that. Iko chapter gani? Who knows? The Bill of Rights is which chapter? Four. 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 So, so there are some particular chapters within the constitution that we should know and ingrain and even teach to our youth, to our children. Because I think that as long as we live it and breathe it, then we will be able to see it come to life. But as long as imeka kwa kitabu kama biblia, unasoma tu sometimes, then you will never see the power of the constitution. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much, Neruma. I'll come to Mualimu here. I was actually having a discussion with Mualimu Mutemi about a cartoon that Gado did. Uh, children in my neighborhood were discussing BBI last Saturday and how uh, their houses have been boring because their parents have just been following BBI the whole Friday. And they didn't really seem to understand what was going on. So I decided to help them understand. And one of the girls actually had a cartoon Gado had uh, drawn of uh, BBI in the grave and uh, two politicians trying to get it from, from the grave. <laughs> and when I was having that discussion with Malumutemi, Malumutemi asked me, how old are those children? And I told him actually between five and nine. And he asked me, do you actually realize that that nine year old will be a registered voter 10 years to come? In another decade, the question is turning 11. In another decade, this nine-year-old will be a registered voter. And this is the right time to actually convert them because they don't know tribalism. They don't know all these other things that we put into it. And so I want him to give us our reflections. <laughs> Thank you so much for the opportunity, uh, Buni Media uh, and my fellow panelists and the audience about his end. Um, Katiba at 11. Um, I think it's, it's uh, just, just like this, this, this must have done. It's, um, BBI is still live. They attempt to uh, recentralize power um, <clears throat> because that's what BBI was. It's a, it was an attempt to take power back to the presidency. Uh, and this constitution, um, I remember asking myself how Kibake could support it. Because I, when I read it, when I read the draft constitution in, uh, in 2009, 2010, I saw the transformative, as, a, as an ordinary person who's not a lawyer, I saw what it, the power it was giving. I think this is what Nalima is talking about, the power that it's giving the citizens. And I wondered how can politicians support this constitution and actually even campaign for it? I think they didn't understand 
what they were doing. They didn't read it. I, I, I just concluded that Kibaki didn't read it. Someone read it for him. And I concluded <laughs> that someone within his office had the goodwill of Kenya at heart and had convinced him to support this thing. Because I saw, I saw all these things that you're seeing. Remember Uhuru uh, speaking last week, uh, no, uh, uh, a few weeks ago speaking and saying that uh, this constitution is like a yoke uh, on his neck as a, as a president. And I was like, that is what it was supposed to be. Because remember where we were coming from, we were coming from an imperial presidency of his father, Kenyatta, and Moi becoming more than like kings than presidents, concentrating all power in the presidency. And this constitution was meant to disperse power, uh, to reorganize from the colonial state that was led by a governor, the governor who became uh, the first prime minister, Jomo Kenyatta, and uh, the first president, Jomo Kenyatta, and concentrated even more power than the governor. Or, uh, I mean, I think Kenyatta, his presidency took power, the power that was the queen's, queen of England, and put it in the presidency. And the guy was untouchable, it was above the law, and all those things. And when I heard Uhuru talking about how the constitution is a yoke around his neck, I was like, good, we have a good constitution that is doing what it's supposed to do. And that was the, the whole thing about it. It was supposed to take power from the presidency, take it to institutions. The judiciary was a department during Moi's time and Kenyatta's time, was just a, a department within the AG's office, uh, judiciary. Uh, the president could appoint judges, could even write uh, judgments for them. And if you don't write a favorable judgment, you are fired immediately. You lost your job, you know? And so people uh, lived in terror. Um, the, this constitution brought in independent institutions, including the judiciary, which has become, with a, with a, with a high court judgment, um, and then which was uh, affirmed by the Court of Appeal, the judiciary has finally come of age as an institution of the constitution uh, that, that is independent as, uh, as a bad arm um, of, um, you know, of, of, of the, the state. Now, uh, before we had one arm called the executive, which is a presidency that used to control all the other arms. Even today it controls, as, a, as um, has been indicated, it controls parliament. Parliament is just a rubber stamp of the executive, especially with, with the current speaker who's Uhuru's uh, bosom buddy or drinking buddy. Uh, so he just pushes things through that whatever Uhuru wants pushed through they pushed through. But the judiciary has refused to do that. And I was, I was eagerly waiting for the Court of Appeal to, uh, 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 to, to affirm the High Court judgment because I knew that the, 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 I mean, the judiciary now has said we, we can stand on our own and we will not go to the executive. And you can see how Uhuru is deflated. Even Raila is very deflated. Because now they can't, they can't, they can't touch the courts cannot be touched, and um, to reflect on that, you would also uh, remember, as Dismas has indicated, um, there was an attempt immediately. The the constitution was promulgated, and there was um, um, the institutions were being staffed initially. The commissions, and the judiciary itself. Uh, a lot of Kenyans have forgotten that Kibaki actually attempted to appoint. Uh, a, a new chief justice unconstitutionally. There was a chief justice and what? There was something else. A chief justice and, and DPP, yeah, and a DPP. I'll go even um, uh, further than this man's and actually name names. There were Trojan horses within the, 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 <laughs> the, the, the commissions. The most important commission, the, there were two. Uh, there was the uh, CIC, Constitutional Implementation for, uh, Commission, the one was supposed to implement this constitution. We had Nechaya's son as the head. Mm. We had uh, Waiguro's current husband as a deputy. Those guys are system guys. They were there to block the implementation of the constitution, not to implement the constitution. And if you look at the history of CIC, all they did was make sure that the constitution was not implemented as it should have been. The second one was the transition authority uh, headed by Kenodia Mwangi. Uh, so what the government did was ensure that Kimnodia Mwangi and his people had salaries, but they don't have money for programs. And initially, I think for a whole year, they don't even have an office. 
They were not given an office, so they could not meet anywhere. They were just sitting at home earning their salaries. And then they did not have money. Because what were they supposed to do? They were supposed to midwife the constitution. They were supposed to ensure that uh, uh, the, 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 the functions that were being transferred to counties are done systematically. So train the county governors, county assemblies, county staff to be able to govern as the constitution intended. Uh, but there was a, a, um, a process that uh, many Kenyans don't know because it's not documented anywhere, uh, which was meant to make sure that the constitution fails within the first two years and Kenyans complain about it. And then it's, we have a referendum and we go back to uh, a, a centralized system, not the devolved system, because the devolving, devolved system was supposed to take power and take it to, to the people. And this was called, uh, you remember uh, the constitution was very clear on the steps, how, how you devolve power, how, how you release functions to counties after how many years, after training and all that. So make sure that transition authority is not working. Uh, so uh, people are not prepared to, to receive the power they were being given at the county level, and then release all the money at the same time and the functions when the counties are not ready, and especially the function of health. You remember the strikes, uh, the first years, the uh, nurse strike, nurses strikes, doctor strikes, and these strikes were actually sponsored by the, the, the executive because health had been devolved. Remember Uhuru's first project in 2013 was to buy machines to supply hospitals for, you know, in a devolved function, but Kutenda, remember the, the, the reason for centralizing is Kutenda. If you, if you, if you're, you, you, right now, if you want to, to sell something to the, uh, to the health sector, you have to negotiate with 47 counties and the national government. They wanted a situation where you just negotiate with the Ministry of Health and then they buy for all the counties. When you centralize tender, tenders, then that's where corruption comes in. So this constitution has, was able to fight back. Governors were able to say, we are not going to take those machines because we were not consulted. And that was the first pushback by the constitution. Um, so uh, when you reflect about now that the first institution has actually been able to stand up, which is the judiciary, which is the only institution of the independent institutions that has actually been able to now fully stand up. I'm hoping that the other independent institutions will be able to, to follow the, the example of, of, the, of the judiciary. For me, the most disappointing has been the police. I remember the first IG under this constitution actually handed over power, the security of tenure to the president. Can you imagine you're given power, you're told nobody can fire you, and you go back and say, please, let's give the president power to fire me. You know, how, how I don't know, I don't know what, what you would call that, you know. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, with the judiciary having set that example, um, because I know even if these guys go to the Supreme Court, they're just wasting, it's lawyers who are earning salaries. Yeah, the lawyers have. They're just earning their salary. <laughs> <laughs> just earning their. So they'll tell their clients, let's take this thing to the Supreme Court and all that. And then, of course, it will drag them and earn some more money. And um, yeah, and um, Raila has actually stated categorically that he does, not, he's not, he does not support that attempt. So my reflection is that uh, we have a good thing. Uh, we have now at 11. Uh, you know, as Nalima said, this takes time. So this when at 11, when like the institutions created by this constitution have now fully come of age, at least the judiciary has come of age. And, and I think I am hoping that there'll be, you know, the others will gather courage from that, knowing that they can go to the judiciary now in case uh, Uhuru or any other despot who comes after him uh, tries to you know, to, 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 to downplay the constitution. I've had people talk about a possible root of presidency and, and he, the fact that uh, most probably he would attempt to remove term limits and become president for life like his buddy Museveni. <laughs> but I don't think this constitution would allow him. The fact that you can go to court, the fact, he, he's, whatever attempts he would start as Uhuru has, has tried and, and not succeeded, uh, because Ruto, first of all, he'll be playing to the, you know, be, he's a populist, so he'll be playing to the gallery. 
to be trying to, pre uh, to present himself as he is today, very constitutional from Mamboga and Wanjiko, which we know he's not. Uh, but he'll, he'll pretend, even his, his trial shenanigans. The only thing I'd be worried about is that he's very, he's, he's known to, to take care of people, if we know what I mean. So I, I, I hope we would not get, we, don't, we would not even experience, we would not get anywhere near that presidency. Um, but this constitution, I think, would be able to give us that, uh, the latitude to be able to, to deal with anything thrown at it because it protects itself. I think I'll, I'll stop there for now. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, before the, uh, Bina gives us her reflections and she... Oh. But you're loud enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> before Bina gives us uh, her reflections, it said that the, the making and the process of making this constitution is as important as the text. And I think that is the reason why most people were not very comfortable with BBI because the process of changing the constitution is as important as the text in that constitution. And we all feel like the process wasn't really followed and uh, people were shortchanged, they were not consulted our aspirations were not reflected as they were in the Constitution of Kenya 2010. So what are your reflections as far as we've come? I think next time I'm invited on a panel like this, I'll request to speak first <laughs> because <laughs> after, I didn't. You remember you thought it was bad speaking after him? <laughs> So next time I'll just request to go fast. But uh, real quick, um, I think for me, when it comes to reflecting on where we are at, and uh, when she was asking about the gains, um, for me, I would say it's a yes and no, but mainly a no for me. And real quick, just to pick up on where Nirima uh, had left, or rather some of the things she had mentioned about relating to certain aspects of the constitution. And I think, that for me is what should matter, especially on articles like Article 43. And just real quick, if you know what Article 43 is all about, just lift your hand up. And then randomly, I'll just ask someone to tell us what it is. If you know what Article 43 is all about, just lift your hand up, Article 43. Article 43. You see, I've uh, wrote this one. <laughs> We're not counting this one. Just look around you. Imagine, just look around you. Article 43, lift your hand up again. <laughs> Imagine in this whole room, we're talking about only three people who know what Article 43 is all about. And majority of us are vocal, are in civil society, right? What does it say? Maybe you could just highlight it. Yeah. So for me, uh, when, we, when we talk about the gains, right? Um, and we're talking about, uh, I'll probably just read it to highlight it. Um, that every person has the right to the highest attainable standard of health, which includes right to healthcare services, including reproductive health, uh, right to accessible and adequate housing, and reasonable standards of sanitation, to be free from hunger and to have adequate food of accessibility, I mean, adequate food of acceptable quality, to clean and safe water in adequate quantities, to social security and to education. So for me, if I'm to just gauge it with this article alone, I'm just like, we have failed on so many levels. Like we have failed on so many levels. Yeah. Look at the standard of our healthcare in this society. Mothers are dying outside hospitals 10 years later, like outside hospital. You guys even saw the case of the mother was giving birth outside Kumwani. Some of them in the communities, Mikali can tell you, guys are giving birth at home, right? Talk about um, the quality of food. You saw the campaign Rima was doing about, you know, toxins in terms of uh, the food that we eat. We're talking about ugali being our staple food. Is it even safe to eat ugali in this country, right? And that was a very powerful, that was a very powerful campaign. Hunger, we're always fundraising, always fundraising, fundraising for food because guys cannot access food. To clean and safe water. We work with Chama women and we work, in, you know, in the urban informal settlement. And anytime we are working with them in terms of uh, their right to demand better public service delivery, water always comes up. There are guys who only receive water once a week, once a week. 
once a week. And it's even worse if you're a parent. You can imagine if you cannot access water, like once a week. And you, you even, like you have an infant, you don't have a job, you have to buy water every other day. COVID has happened. You've even lost your job or you've closed down your business and you still have to buy water. So for me, I think when it comes to reflecting on the gains uh, of the constitution, and I look at certain aspects of the constitution, I would say we haven't done much. Freedom of speech. You can speak, but then there's no freedom after speaking. So I think, <laughs> so, I, you know, yes, you speak, you know. citizens is still wanting, I would say we haven't done much. We haven't gained much uh, because even when you look at all these things, young people bear the brunt of it, whether it's unemployment, whether it's access to healthcare. I mean, how many even young guys have NHIF? Let's even start there. How many guys have that? You know what I mean? So if the hospital around you is not working, you don't even have NHIF. Like all the levels, uh, whether it's of oppression, or the things we're talking about, young people in this country bear the brunt of it. So when it comes to the gains, I would say it's a yes and no, but mainly no. Yeah. Just to mention, Gado has a collection of cartoons dubbed Freedom After Speech. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? Yes. <laughs> That'd be interesting to see. Yeah, so, so, so may, maybe see. you can you can talk to him after this. Right after this. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we'll take reflections from the audience. Uh, two ladies, two gentlemen. Do you think we've done much? Have we been able to translate the text or the aspirations of the constitution to our lives? Mm -hmm. You're raising your hand or you're stretching. <laughs> Thank you so much. Comrades power. Power. Your power. <laughs> Comrades power. Power. Comrades power. power. Comrades power. 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 I think uh, the panelists have actually given us the true position. But me, I want to look at, to reflect from the perspective of responsibility. Because the constitution gives us the rights, but also responsibilities. Because we Lazima to Piganie Katiba itekelezo. It obligates every Kenyan to defend and protect the constitution. Saila tunasema, tuna, tuna point mkono kwa uhuru na Raila Naruto, hizi inezi na kwambata wewe ukuna responsibility. I want to talk about public participation. And my friend Mulela, uwa nasema hivi, Mulela uwa na nachalea, nambia sidi, kama siku za mwa Kenya, people, people didn't have a right to meet, but they could still organize, na waka organize, pa katiba yaka kuja. Na sisi, hi katiba, imetupatia hata power ya kuenda kutini ya tekodwa ndi tu. So unapata, if you look at devolution, enye ni mzuri, lakini within the counties, bado kuna centralization of devolution. Unapata, ikuwa kidisuru, wadu pale, pale kidisuru, wadu kapta gati, lazimu wende city hall, kukwe license. If you are coming from Obera, in Migori County, you have to go to Migori to get those services. So I think as citizens, we also need to ensure that there's real devolution at the county level. Because it talks about even village administration structures, but they're not existing. Pili, unapata, there's public participation. Look at even the budgeting process. Aya Katiba. Unapata, iyo cycle liko. But how many people go to these meetings? How many people go to these meetings? So unapata, the people who go there decide for the rest. So when I pata wale watenda pale wana tumbo na MCA, wana sema ende ni museme, wata kuchangaza bara bara. Kwa sababu MCA akona kampuni ya bara bara. Asa yeye 
So unapata ukiambia mkenya aende anakaambia nitakutakuwa na fare. There's a time at county hall we are only eight of us discussing for the whole na rumanyi mko tu hapa. Alafu unasema ati governor ni mbaya lakini umepewa nafasi ya wewe kwenda pale ku decide because you cannot monitor a budget kama uja au ku take part in drafting it. It's a process. It's a whole process. So hiyo ni ya kwanza. Nikimalizia na mtawa na, 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 na nani uh, there's something that if you look at the constitution unajua hii mambo ya madeni chapter 12 is very clear on the principles of public finance management the public, public finance management act is very clear but mimi kuna dono wa mawakili ambao wakapa atanisaidia kunifafanulia kuna hizi na mtema alishuka juu ya IMF we have international treaties that Kenya has ratified the general rules of international i think it's article 2 so una pata kuna some of these treaties that maybe nerima is talking about toxic toxins in food but there are some of these treaties that allow for importation of those toxic pesticides and herbicides there are some of those international laws that call for liberal, liberalization and free trade agreements about the other mamukama za madeni so i think we also need to relook at some of those areas because not every law that is ratified by this country is or not every treaty that is ratified is benefiting the people na sasa unapata kama article 43 tukipigania unga revolution tukisema unga thatible tukambiwa ati tuwapatie by the way they told us we might take 10 years because we are still operationalizing it it is still 10 years down the line watu bado wako na njaa so mimi kwa maoni yangu serikali imefail kutekeleza katiba na hata sisi wenyewe kama wanaje pia tumefail we have to leave the boardrooms leo tumekuwa tunaenda jivanje tukapigwa tia gas wanasema kuna covid ilhali raila kuna rally ruta kuna rally huda kuna rally kuria leo msukua leo alikuwa na watu wengi kiambu lakini katiba imekuwa jivanje was cordoned off literally because tulikuwa tumesema tunaenda kufanya katiba ya huko so we need to that like the more kenya so the more mouse we need to reclaim this power Just like the Bible says the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence and the violent shall take it by force. I know wakili hapa anasema lakini lazima kama polisi wanatumia tear gas. Wanatumia rungu kuducha hapa. Tunasema kwamba kuangalia we must reclaim that power ndio sisi kama wananchi pia tukue na sauti yetu. Asante sana. Thank you. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Abi Dorcas. I'm the women representative for the Bunge la Mwananchi. Niko na call so sauti yangu itakuwa chini kidogo. Eh I want to talk about the at chapter 6 of the Kenyan Constitution on leadership and integrity. Uh, I think also when we when you talk about us failing uh, we also should be looking at the cuz this police if they are kama sasa hizi sidi ameongelea mambo ya hiyo kupigwa tia gas police wana wana, wana surround your place so watu waezi demonstrate au waezi fanya anything they have leaders when you are juu yao where is the integrity if they are there to serve the kenyans wako na wanafaa kusikiza hata wao wa Kenya wenye wako hapo kwa sababu sisi ndio tumewapea hiyo mandate ni wako nayo according to the constitution not it's not just the the leaders from the perspective of the police but pia hawa viongozi wetu ni sisi tumewapatia hiyo power but how are they leading us because me na feel wakati wanaingia pale sisi wanga tunaangalia tu mambo ya pesa nini hatuangalia ngi politics zenye wako nazo za leadership and that's one of that one of the thing yenye tunafaa tuangalie sana ndio in future tusikuje kuti blame sisi wenyewe and again there's there, there's one last thing that I've said people need to be in solidarity for us to achieve everything we want to achieve thank you <laughs> Wa Kenya mpo? Comrades power. Power. Comrades power. Ah kwa majina mimi naitwa Rachel Mwikali, mimi ni mwanaharakati na pia mimi ni feminist. 
Niwana recently pia uru anasema Kenya ni feminist, ha? Eh? <laughs> Na tunomoka. <laughs> so mina unge kwa kiswa hili kusabu na kuna wa Kenya wengi hapa pia wangependa kuchangia u mjadala na kushukuru panel at least uh, kwa kai discussion na kusenta through Buli Media. Kama kuna time miu kinyuliza tunanili kudefendi katiba ni sai, sai, wakati ii inchi kukonfused, <coughs> wakati ii inchi tunona watu wana najisi katiba, wakati ii inchi tunona vijana wanauliwa, na wakati ii inchi tunona tuta agenda bill ijapitishwa. So pia minda kwa na biasness kwa pande ya gender equality. Kwa mama tumejitokeza upande zote, hata bina lijitokeza last time. But tukiangalia hii process, ni kama na ndisino majority kama wanawake lakini ya tusikizwi. So hapo katiba metufailisha, but si katiba ni na implement na metufailisha. Katiba metupatia hii opportunity, but watuwa kuwa na implement, wametuangusha. Na nikireflect pia na article 43 enye bina uluko na zungumzia na most of you mezungumzia. Mamo pia dignity na inequality. Tumona ni very clear kama ita ni ya COVID kumekona criminalization ya umaskini. Maskini tunonekana ni kama sisi si watu. But pia uzuri COVID ilifutosha nisha sisi sote. Hakuna venye uru sayi angeenda London kutidiwa. Tupambane na lietu wapa kwa nchi. Hakuna venye ongelikondokea. Ara useme tunaenda, unaenda, unaenda wapi. Pia walijifungia uko. So mamba ya right to health imetuangusha sana. Nimbaya sana tunana watu wana kushia kwa manyumba, wezi access. Matibabu. Ama sayi kila WhatsApp group. Kila mtu hapa nikoshua kwa WhatsApp group ya kuchangia pesa ya COVID. Either imenda juu. Ama bill enye mtu kama mepoteza their loved one. Bill imekuja mingi. Na hiyo ifai kukua hivyo Kenya. Hiyo tumekata ifai kukua hivyo. But pia minda ulivenye sidi ya lisema. Easy responsibility ya activist. Pia ni lazima challenge wa Kenya. Na si responsibility ya civil society. Tunelawana. Ini responsibility ya sisi sote kama wa Kenya tutoke. Inje, katiba enye atiko the seven atupatia kuprotest. Wezi tuambia ndiyo, tusi tunazuya COVID-19, but utuzuye sisi enye wana kuprotest. Huku Raila, Uru, anapanga, huko na watu wa Asla Nation, venye wata panga power, alafu wana kituwachia sisi tusipiganiye rights yetu. So mina wa challenge, Marinjes, unanokoko nyuma. Kama mamo endi poko kibato, sa ina the right time kuorganize called our leaders accountable. Mambo ya housing, nyumba ato nabomoleo siku mchana. Uko kariobangi, wanainchi wana bombo leo, na expect kama government wanaenda wapi. So tuwezi sema tunabatisha na hapa raundi. Barabara, watu sawa rudi kwa barabara. Kiyama, it's beyond Twitter. Sasa tuamue, kuna nyandio atakiza kituita lakini kibarabara, tuende kibarabara. Ama neje kombe? Mkona nguvu ya barabara? Ama mkona nja? Mkona nguvu ya barabara? Eh, unga, unga mepanda bei saa hii. Nyanya saa hii ni ten bob. Nyanya likuwa ni 3 bob ama 2 bob, sayi ni 10 bob. Inachangia maka violence. System ya violence, pia vinyo na kwa dealt with ya violence against women. There's no pia tuwa kukwa inchi, wanaume wa mtu natafuta mtu mdogo na lala na yeye. Na tunangalia, natusema katiba hiko. Hiyo pia lazima tukatee kama wa Kenya. So mi challenge, na zawa challenge uh, na wa Kenya wanafuatili yoko kwa social media na kila maali. Silalishe, sayi ni taimzuri ya kwa muka. Hold our leaders into account to talk as a public participation to the end. Wanakuja wanaanza kukampaign. Wakikuja wakwa na mwuzo ulikuwa hapi siku ya COVID. Walitoroka wakakuacha piki yetu. Kukweli wongo. Kuna MP wakwa lukuletea chakula. MP lukuletea chakula. <laughs> na mwono ukumuliza maswali. Situ ni mchagua? Wakatu wakilishe. Sindio? Kulikuwa na budget ya COVID. Atiku yona. So lazima pia si kama wa Kenya tujiorganize. Tusiongoje ati mashirika. Tujiorganize huko kwa vitongoji duni. Tujiorganize ni middle class. Middle class ishikane na watu huko chini. Tuweze kureclaim our right. But tuwezi kata ya kwamba katibi mbetupatia nguvu ya kuongea. As much as wanakuja kutupatia ati ya kuna freedom kisha ongea. But as much as kuna hizo opportunity kuneza ongea. Mimi na sita, ba, sita ba, banduka lazima to protect and to defend 2010 constitution. Ama hapo vipi comrades? Lazima to protect, to defend 2010 constitution. Himo mbao ya BBI waende na ayo. Sia taki BBI. Asante. Thank <laughs> you.
Article 43 our implement kamba inasema health kitu kila mtu anafaa kupewa yes i don't get to up thank you Asante ni sana mi kwa majina ya kiserikali ni John Mulingwa kwa jina la kimapambano ni Garang Zalendo mi natoka Kamukunji mi ni human rights defender na youth organizer i think uh, hii siku ya katiba inanikumbusha ga vitu mingi sana ambazo pale tumetoka unajua pia usipojua tumetoka wapi kujua pale tunaenda itakuwa ngumu and i think uh, ni muhimu sana tuweze ku reference na swali bina aliuliza ni very important na lazima tukuwe serious kwa sababu we cannot be talking about a constitution you know nothing about mimi niko na hapa hapa ya katiba whenever i want to refer, to refer anything narudi hapa si mpaka ubeba na kitabu or nini because ni important bila hii constitution hatutatuwezi kuwa na country i Kenya tutaka Kisomalia kila mtu atakuwa warlord na kila mtu ataka area yake na atafanya vitu sheria zitakuwa zake the constitution is the only contract we have with these people without a constitution kila mtu atatengeza constitution yake akuwe na area yake because saingine mwa na crazy ideas nilikuwa najiuliza we are 50 million Kenyans na kuna inchi iko na 260 people na iko recognized na UN where are we going as 50 million mbona tusikuwe mainchi mingi alafu sasa tukuje kwa union kila inchi iko na jigavan mbona tunakubali kunyanyaswa 50 million hizo ni katika my crazy ideas za hii Kenya katika kusolve vitu so i think uh, nikiangalia kule tumetoka yenye tumetoka mbali Article one ya, ya the old constitution ilikuwa inasema all sovereign power belongs to the president full stop sawa so, that is the article one ya the old constitution ilikuwa ina, inasema all sovereign power belongs to the president full stop alafu sasa inaanza ku outline powers the president sio hii yetu inatuambia all sovereign power belongs to the people article two in explain vile hiyo power itakuwa exercise article three ndo hii CD anasema kwa every kenyan has an obligation to uphold protect and defend this constitution hiyo ni katiba so hauna choice the constitution has commanded us to uphold it protect it and defend it so usi usi usiwe na excuse tukiopresiwa na katiba iko katiba imekwambia uko na hiyo ni kazi yako kama sovereign power mwenye ako na sovereign power i think ndawakumbusha tu kitu moja ile ilikuwa kwa <laughs> the old laws najua kuna wakati Kenya up to 97 in Kenya ulikuwa ukishikwa bila pesa sawa ilikuwa inaitwa law on vagrancy ulikuwa ukishikwa hii Kenya bila pesa unaenda 6 to 9 months jela without money bila pesa yote kwa mfuko ulikuwa ukishikwa unaenda 6 to 9 months hizo zilikuwa sheria za colonial ambayo ni carry over sasa hii hata ukiangalia hii criminal procedure nini criminal law yetu hii inatushika hii inatufunga hii sasa hii inafanya usikwe na mask most of those laws ni za 1935 bado hazijakuwa reviewed ni colonial wakili dimas this dimas hapa atakwambia na big up sana dimas ulikuwa na sisi wakati ya security laws na uli defend sana tumpigieni dimas makofi <laughs> i think hapo ndo tumetoka tulikuwa unashikwa bila kama una pesa 
jela ilikuwa ina eh, compromise na kulikuwa na very funny 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 laws chief alikuwa alikuwa ulikuoneza shikwa tu unasemekana wewe chief akuangalia hivi ya yard powers kusema wewe cd unaka unaka ku breach peace the way you are looking you look like you are breaching peace ndani i think hiyo ni kazi tumefanya na tumetoka mbali hii katiba i remember very well on 17th no, november 2009 hiyo siku ndio the harmonized draft constitution in lonchiwa kicc i was there and i was arguing with a with an ap nilikuwa namuuliza huo ap hapo kwa get because cc kama raia wa kawaida tulikuwa tumekwa one side wacha sasa hivi legate ya kcc imekwa the other side ilikuwa hii main so si tulikuwa raia wa kawaida unajua hiyo lugha ya raia wa kawaida ama common mwananchi mimi sijui natoka wapi na katiba ija mention ni ni lugha za kutudimin sisi tulikuwa tumekwa one side yeah <laughs> sovereign sovereign kenyans mimi kuna wale si wa kawaida na wale si wa kawaida wana exist tu hapa Kenya so that day tulikuwa tumeko one side alafu hii side moja ya KICC si tuko kwa line hii side nyingine kuna wale wanakuja wakiingia na tunaenda ku launch harmonize the draft constitution so i had to ask that ap sasa wewe mbona unatusukuma sukuma hapa kamuliza between you and me who pays taxes to pay who nilimuliza hivyo huo ap na hiyo ilikuwa constitution ya zamani sababu nilikuwa namuliza hivyo because i knew niko kwa niko kwa crowd but ningekuwa nae peke yake because he was an inspector ningejipata pabaya and we did that tukaenda tukafanya harmonized draft tuka collect views by the way tuli participate ku collect 10000 views za young people Kenya mzima but what they ended up giving us ni article 55 ambayo iko very shallow saa hii bbi inaleta the ilikuwa leta commission ya youth ambayo ni shallow kushinda the current national youth council so i think as young people lazima tusimame tupigane tuhakikishe kuwa our, our rights and our position as young people kwa sababu sisi ndo victim kama ni extrajudicial killings sio nadi wazee wakiwawa i don't see old people being shot dead sawa so, it is we sawa so, sisi ndio hatuna kazi sisi ndio guns wa politicians sisi ndio all bad things in kenya ukitaka ku mention hakuna the other generation the older generation haitajwi sisi ndio tunatajwa so we have to be alive to the fact that sisi ndo tutajikomboa if maumau wange kasirika waingie forest up to now tungekuwa tuko colonize we could we, up to now tungekuwa subjects of her majesty tunaelewana kwa hivyo let's let's organize to see tupe mbao kama ni katiba chukua soma hata eh, kauelewi hii constitution yetu imeandikwa language very simple soma tu elewa ukisikia sasa ile si na kina mutemi tumeamua twende street kuja tu kushikwa awezi shiko kapelekwa hege utapelekwa tu around na tutangangana tuta vile tutakutoa so usiogope tiagas si kitu sawa i unajua maumau kama wangeogopa kufa wangeingia mstuni so every battle inakuwa na consequences na consequences isikuogopeshe because you will be fighting for the next generation ile mbogi itakuja next isitulaumu isiseme si tulilalisha tukawaekea path wrong the way si usemaga ono eh mzazi wangu mbona ana ka kitu hiyo mbona hakuiba hizo siku watu wakiiba no mbona hakufanya hivi hizo siku watu wakifanya let us be proactive let us continue organizing spaces kama hizi let us continue encouraging more young people to join the resistance movement kwa sababu the more we are the more the struggle will be easier to 
deal with the system kwa sababu tuna deal na baronial people hawa ni remnants of colonials ukoloni ijaenda Kenya bado inaitwa imperial british imperial east africa company na uhuru ndio agent <laughs> Thank you. I think we, we we go back to the panelists first, and then we'll take another round of reflections from the audience. I want us to, to start with Dimas once again. <laughs> but we start with Bina this time. Yeah. Or Motemi. <laughs> we start with Motemi. We start with Motemi as a victim. <laughs> Quote and quote. <laughs> <laughs> there have been documented uh, human rights abuses, uh, Mutemi. We, we have seen you on national TV for the right reasons. And uh, I've, I've talked to Dimas. I can't remember what, where we were going that day for projects. And you told me you slept at 3, 3 p.m. 3 a.m. because you had to go uh, get the protesters from the police station so that they can sleep home so that you can also sleep home uh, as they, they go home. Uh, Mutemi, what are your reflections on the notable human rights abuses, extrajudicial killings, people have been executed, people have been walking home and they did get home. Uh, I remember Mukali has mentioned the issue of uh, people being criminalized because of being poor. One day the government woke up and they realized that the land in Kariobagi South was their land had missed a pandemic and people had to be homeless. And uh, the other day I realized that uh, we didn't have commissioners for the Kenya Human Rights Commission. And now that we are recruiting for IABC, more than two years mm -hmm. after the other term of the commissioners had ended, the president has now realized that we need uh, commissioners for the Kenya Human Rights Commission, uh, Kenya National Commission on Human Rights as we go to to elections. So what are your reflections on the lack of accountability and uh, the documented human rights abuses? Uh, <clears throat> thank you for that question. And uh, thank you for the reflections uh, from the audience. Um, we have, as, a, as, as Garang has said very eloquently, <laughs> Kenya is still a new colonial state. Still, um, and let me explain that in, 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 a, in a, as, as a short time as possible. Kenya was founded um, as a company, Imperial British East African Company. Um, and the reason why the company came here is because at that time, uh, the British Empire was contracting across the world. The, the, it had become too expensive to run the empire. <laughs> Uh, they were being chased out of places such as India and other places. And so um, they were looking, and when they came here, they were actually searching for the first explorers, were searching for the source of the Nile so they can continue importing spices. Spices were the most important thing at that time from India and, and the East. And uh, Egypt had blocked them uh, from using the Suez Canal. So they were looking for another source, another route they could use to go to the East. And then they came and found us here to Kibarizi, Wakaona Allah. You can, uh, you can take over these guys. So they sent that company. And the company made so much money that the Queen, then I think it was Queen Victoria, decided, the, the, the British government decided, no, we are, we are going to uh, run this country ourselves. So it became a protectorate, I think, in 1902. No, 1905. So, so initially, this was an afterthought, you know? And then at that time, there's an article that uh, I've shared on, on, on my Twitter in Czech that we wrote with Sung Weo. Talks about that uh, Kenya is a company, Kenya is, and what, what you are seeing even today, the, the effects of what you're seeing. Because when we got independence, which nobody fought for, our people fought for land and freedom. Remember Mama who was a Kenya land and freedom army. It was not Kenya independence army. Nobody was looking for independence. What is independence anyway? Independence meant those who are working for Mzungu as clerks, as cooks, as uh, people in the offices, uh, uh, occupy the office that the Mzungu was occupying. That was what independence was. 
And those people, the collaborators, did not fight for anything. They did not fight for, they just, they were just handed over uh, when the Mzungu left. The Mzungu left, pulled back, and left them running the country on his behalf. Uh, and so that's what you say, Kenya is still a neocolonial state. Now, based on that, uh, who has talked about a law of 1935? Laws uh, that were, these are, these are an ordinance, which is called the, the one that was used to create the, the tribal police that turned into the AP. Um, and the ordinance talks about the work of the AP or the tribal police then being to br brutalize the natives into submission. That's actually on paper. To brutalize the natives into submission. Why? Because you had a few Mzungus who wanted to rule millions of natives. So they had to find a way to create a force that would help them rule that. And then the force has to come, had to come from the people within the country. And that attitude is the one that today, up to date, whereby you have a few rulers, elites, and then you have the police as the buffer between the citizens and them and the, and the rulers. That's the same attitude Kenya police has to do. Even after being changed from a force to a service, that is just on paper. The attitude, the training in Kiganjo. Uh, someone told me when they are, uh, when they are doing the training, the initial training, physical training, um, which happens, they start marching or exercising at 4 a.m. in Kiganjo in Nyeri, which is very cold. The chant that they do is Rayani Adui, Rayani Adui. So it's ingrained in your mind because you're being separated from your brothers and sisters and your mother and your father, your community, and being turned into this force to protect the, the people, the rulers. So that attitude is the same thing that is happening today. It's the one that now makes them go, Wakena uh, Kibra, Ama Huruma, Ama Kenjokoma recently, when you're trying to deal with the youth, you just use brutal, you just brutalize them. Because Rayani are doing. And you have no other solutions because these guys are, the youth are, are looking for opportunities, they're looking for jobs, but we have people in power who have no solutions. They don't know how to run a country. They don't know how to run an economy so that it creates jobs for the young people. So they, they think they can kill all the young people. Yet yeah, young people are more than 80% of the population. So unfortunately they can't kill all, all the young people. So what you have is the now a mixture of a state that was created to protect a few, to extract through taxation. You can see the way the whole government is taxing everybody and then take to the hands of a few. So um, the, the constitution was meant to address that. But unfortunately the people who came to implement that constitution especially because of the ICC, the Uhurus and the Rutos, who are a remnant of the Kanu system, are the wrong people to be given that responsibility of implementing the constitution. They've actually been fighting it and trying to tear it down and take us back to the old constitution that said all sovereign power belong to the president. Have you seen the way Uhuru has been acting? He's been acting like he's the only sovereign in this country. <laughs> he does not obey court orders. Remember Miguna got 13 court orders, he was put in, still put in a plane and taken to, uh, to Canada. He was exiled. Can you imagine taking somebody from, someone born in a heron and like a Canada. What kind of impunity is that? But you see, when you think the country is yours, you're a prince or a king, you can do anything you want. That's what Uhuru thinks. That's what the constitution memambia huwezi fanya vilonataka. And unfortunately, it's not just Uhuru, because even Raila was supporting BBI, that means he also wants those powers. Ruto, I can tell you, I've spoken to his people. He wanted that thing to pass because it gives him five new seats to negotiate with other tribal barons in the campaigns. No, Naneza Patia promised Mutu to be prime minister, to be deputy prime minister, to be in in and a bad deputy president. So Pluto was supporting BBI Numa, like Jifanya and Apigana and Apigana Nai. So uh, again, to reflect, constitution, the young people, as the city has said and others have said, this constitution gives you so much power. The space, I took a kai vikitambo by the way, the way you are seated in this room. That is just that is in itself it's a power having this conversation. It's power and it's being broadcast live to other Kenyans el elsewhere. 
that is a space to organize that you have and the space to find new ways of, you know, being Kenyan. You know, and our, our politicians have no solutions. Remember the, these young boys who are killed in Embu, they had just started a new business, you know, uh, of selling well, you a nyama. They just opened, actually that was their first day. And most probably the money that they made is what the cops wanted. The cops who beat them, maybe it's that money they wanted. No, no, you have to pay their income for that day. Now, uh, people who are not, an economy that is not creating jobs, young people create jobs for themselves and you're still brutalizing them. I mean, we need to resist these things. We need to say no. We need to say no, this country is ours. It's not just a few guys up there. And not somebody, and this is my last uh, point. Um, Kenya has made a very big mistake when they handed over power. And I was discussing this with the, uh, my, uh, the cab driver I came with today. Um, Uhuru Kenyatta, before he became, before he was picked from where he was picked by Moy, had never run anything, not even a kiosk or a taxi or anything. I know there's a story they gave in 2013. I don't know if you worked at KCD. That was just a story for campaigns. Because his, his own mother, he, I think they tried to give him a role within the family business and he, he messed up. And so he was not trusted by the family to run anything within the whatever. When Moy wanted a Kenyatta, I think that Moy had a deal with the Jomo Kenyatta that he handed over to one of the sons. When Moy wanted to hand over, he wanted Mohoho, the one who runs the family business, the, who was younger brother. That's all the story says. And um, Mamangena said, no, 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 that's the one who runs my businesses. So I'm going to, you take that, that one who drinks and smokes bang there. <laughs> uh, that's the story as it's given. So this is a guy you gave a country of 50 million, you entrusted with it to run. A, a guy who the mother cannot trust to touch anything within the country family business. To Fikiria Sana. And even a lot of young people are thinking of handing over to another guy, a similar guy, who <laughs> lies to us that he sold chicken to become a billionaire. <laughs> to Fikiria Sana. Because if someone is a thief and you give him this country, the first thing he will do when he sits on that seat is increase the theft. Ataiba, Ataiba Malize. Kama anataka kuwa dynasty, because anawana ma dynasty na anawadanganya yeni hasla. Atayanza, ameanza kujenga dynasty yake already, as you can see. I mean, we know these stories. His daughter is working wherever, his son is doing this and that and that. Don't entrust somebody who has never run anything. What, what business has Ruto ever started? The business that you have to run? Selling chicken. <laughs> Where is that business? In AYJ, he's registered as which company? Someone who uses their position within government to accumulate wealth cannot run a country. And if we, if we entrust these people, if brutalization of young people, it end there because they have no solutions. These guys have no solutions. And so what they do is use the police to suppress the young people. And, the, and that's, that's the, the fact that the constitution allows us to organize should be an opportunity for young people to do something about their lives. Thank you. I'm happy to be for him. <laughs> I thought you said you don't want to talk after no, him. I'm I'm happy to. Uh, I think, first of all, I'll be a bit brief and uh, say that when it comes to implementation of this constitution, just like um, many of us have said, it depends on the quality of the leaders and also the quality of the citizens. And I think we also need to broaden our discussions when it comes to the quality of the citizens in our neighborhoods and even just citizens who surround us. You know, uh, whether we have a huge following on social media or not, like the main space in your unizakwana influence kabisa, ni wolo to make surround. Like, Saizi, Mukele is a Tukanana, Amatani Tukanana for social media. People, you know, people can like, I'm a laugh, 
but kama mwikali amekwambia bina you know that is more powerful and it you know like uh, it will take me back and i'll do something about it so i think even in our neighborhoods and the, for the people who surround us call people out and there is so good at that <laughs> call people out and i'm saying that because uh and i'll just give this example you know in the past during the colonial times when our colonizers were here it was so easy to know who the enemy was because he was white so as africans ungana a white person you knew how the enemy looked like so we're living at a time where uh our enemies they look like you they talk like you they walk like you but they're not about you like collaborators among us you know so you think someone is for you but they're not for you it's because the, you know like they purport to think like you they purport to be there for you they purport you know just like that they look like you talk like you but they're not about you and i think we need to really recognize around us call people out in your circle ni kama vile tunaongelea langa juu ya racism ni kama vile tunaongelea langa juu ya gender based violence na language unajua I'm passionate about uh, gender based violence na ile language tunatumia kwa GBV so any time mtu ako around me anauliza lakini you mama shwali na swali kona sema yeye mbona akutoka hapo hata niko na headline kwa TV inasema woman killed in Kiambu I'm just like apana I talk about it I write about it because it, un, most of the perpetrators they are passive in our stories you know they, you know they, they play a passive role in our stories and because they play a passive role in our stories we discuss the victims why was she still there why didn't she do this why didn't she leave only when the neighbors find her nini you know 4000 teenagers you know 4000 teenagers pregnant those are 4000 perpetrators those are 4000 rapists so when we say 4000 teenagers are pregnant tunaanza kuuliza why is the church not doing its its role or oh, why are parents not spending time and enough time with their kids it's because we're talking about the victims so i think for me it's it's to look at your circle and start speaking out what do your friends think your our own parents influence our voting decisions in this country our own parents i decide unasikia mtu zako kwa like hapana mimi labda niko na hasla ama niko na jubilee like you, i mean have a conversation have a conversation because maybe for you you are liberated but your brother is going to vote according to how your father is saying or according to how your grandfather is saying or, or according to how your mother is saying you have sisters and like nerima said civic education we don't even have it in our schools today when, when we're discussing about katiba at 10 and we're still discussing with nerima language barrier e katiba easy conversations look at even the language we are using here it's english you know even just look at the language we are using look at some of the ambiguous words in our constitution as we work with chama women some of them you know mama mboka nifika class 3 so watu tu wanai conversation anashindwa unasema anashindwa unasema nini so how are we even breaking down this information within our own circles even our young women in the urban informal settlement the same thing and then it's even worse that we have young women in the university space that we work with but don't even have this information so those are the young women now who are supposed to actually even tweet about this information talk about this information they have a, a huge following even on instagram they don't talk about this and i think lastly let's stop talking to the converted you know like the way for me at times i don't invite Mikali in my session because she doesn't need to be there she knows some of these things and we even talk about it i'm like this e session you don't need to be there by the way when we're discussing about rights you know about these things so why are you inviting people who know some of these things why don't you invite people who are so unaware you know like some of the young women we work with in the university space unashindwa hey we haven't done much you have a conversation about governance in this country with someone in the university space and you're shocked literally and you're like this is someone like these are the young people who are going to determine the quality of lives in this country in the next 10 years because gen z's and millennials are the majority in this country and globally as well gen z's and millennials and the foundation they have is so shallow when it comes to politics and governance and they're the ones who are going to infiltrate different spaces because some of us might, might never make it to government government some of us may never make it to be you know politicians tomorrow so these guys are going to infiltrate the private sector and akila kitu yet they have shallow information about all these things so where are we headed 
You know, like I worry personally, I do. Where are we headed? When, we, when we're even just having a basic conversation at the university space, and at times I don't even know what to say. I was even telling Nerima next week to come and facilitate a, a conversation with young women in the university space. Is it, I mean, and then we wonder even why uh, we don't even have the two thirds gender rule. How can we have the two thirds gender rule if in the university space, we barely even have a female president? How? Literally, how? How? Our universities are dominated by young women. So you'd even expect learned young women would understand why we need to engage in government processes and leadership processes and political processes. In this country, the household names in this country began from the universities. The Orengos, the Sakajas, the Babu, even Babu just left university and became an MP. Even the women in politics right now, the Gladys Wangas of this world, they began from the university space. Yet that's the same, same space. You don't even have women in the student leadership body. How are they supposed to engage with national politics if you're not engaging with the, with the political processes in the university space when you have time? How are they supposed to engage outside the university space? Just last year is when we had, I think, the first female president, and she was still under very sharp scrutiny. People don't even talk about her right now. Imagine, in the whole country, one, how many universities do you know about? How many? How many universities do you know about? We don't have a female president, even finding very few female VCs in this country. And we wonder, and we keep on talking about the two thirds. It should start way early. If you're not seeing yourself as a leader in the university space, you cannot see yourself as a leader outside the university space. You cannot see yourself as a leader outside the university space. Ukona time not a how ways you vote. Ukona time not a ways campaign yam to by university. Ukona time you can present yourself for a political position in the school. And then people put pressure on you to do it outside school. Yet you don't even understand how politics affects you at that basic level. I tell people politics in this country determines everything. Because the election next year, it's a determined culture. And you're a motor back in a Brazilian hair, my friend. I'm an adjudged. It's a determined culture. I'm a motor back in a Brazilian hair, my friend. It's a determined my friend. It's a Politics determines even who you end up with in bed. That is why in this country, if today I'm caught up, you know, making out with uh, Mukani, I'll be arrested. It's because politics determines even who, end, who you end up with in bed. So when we look at politics that way, that it follows me everywhere, like the personal is political and we break it down for everyone. So even when I'm in that particular space in the university, even with the Chama women, we talk about it. Like you relate politics to their everyday life. I'm just like, if you're my friend, it's a determined culture. You are. If you're saying a determined, this politics, even for the young women here, it determines who you're going to marry. Because if you're looking for a guy who's stable and who has a job, and by next year, Igaba in a in a make sure Magujana Bado Awanakazi, my friend. <laughs> so election determines everything. <laughs> you see, as I'm telling us, Mama Chalio and Awa Wata Wata Olewa Nanani. So that's it. So I think for me, it's more of really breaking down these political concepts to everyday citizen where they are. You show them how politics affects them, and then you show them the avenues that exist for participation and what they can do about their political power as citizens. That was very powerful, Bina. Uh, I'll say two things uh, from your reflection. We, we had a, a session with uh, Dimas and Dimas gave uh, a story it was supposed to be a story of this guy who was organizing with people like Kinamukali here on the street. And they, they had organized for quite a number of years with that, this guy. A, that was a comrade, huh? Eh? Yes, guy, it was a, a comrade. A guy you, with you them. rely upon whenever you're going to the streets. Yes. You meet for strategy plans mm -hmm. and uh, in the streets at Akwapale Mbele. Mm -hmm. Then uh, he, fell, he fell ill and died mm -hmm. and, and they, they changed and went to the funeral somewhere in upcountry in the western side of Kenya. And then when they were there, uh, that guy got a, is it how many bullets? 21 salute? gun salute. 21 gun salute. 
He was an officer all this time. Yeah, only for them to know he was a cop all this time. So, yes. And when he told that story for the second time, the people who we were talking to, some of them actually, Remember. I think even Sidi was there, yeah. They actually knew who Dimas was talking to. No, Dimas was talking about. So even, even as you organize, even as you grow this movement, you have to be sure, as, as Bina has said, now you cannot really know who your enemy is. So you have to really look out for yourself. So we move to <laughs> Dima's reflection. Well, um, there's something very interesting. Uh, I think it's a saying, but I don't know where it came from, that if you are not uh, on the table, you are in the menu. Yeah. Huh? If you're not yeah. on the menu. No, no. If you're mm -hmm. not on the table, mm -hmm. you are in the menu. In so the you menu. are the meal. You are part you're of the, the meal. Meat. Yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> <laughs> and if you're not on the menu, you are the one eating. <laughs> <laughs> which, which speaks to public participation, right? And speaks to how we're supposed to be involved in anything that affects us. And who is us? Uh, it could be the youth, could be uh, people of a certain economic class, it could be people of certain interests, it could be marginalized people. And so um, it is uh, upon us to ensure that we engage in all these spaces that the constitution has built for us. Um, because uh, if you don't, then you are just going to be a recipient of the decisions of other people. Um, and uh, I remember when, when Garang was uh, speaking right here. I remember a case uh, which was uh, taken uh, to court by IJM, International Justice Mission. And this was uh, probably in 2014. And uh, it's, uh, it comes out of section 45 of the Criminal Procedure Code that allows um, a police officer who's, when they suspect you of just looking like you're a criminal, allows them to approach the court to put you on bond and you have to pay money bond you have, there's no charge sheet there's nothing so it's, it's called the bond to keep the peace and this is a law that ha had been there since since independence even even since even before independence and it's because that organization went to court and uh, actually made arguments on human rights on the right to fair trial on things like that that uh, it was found to be unconstitutional but then uh, it took me back to when the constitution was passed in 2010, parliament was supposed to do an audit of all our laws and to ensure that our laws are this, as, as, as they stand right now abide by the constitution. That audit never happened. So it, became, it, it came up, it became um, the work of civil society organizations uh, and uh, human rights organizations and even victims to to ensure that whenever they are charged under certain laws is when people realize, ah, there's something wrong with this. And then we, we run to court and, uh, and change it. But that is not the way it was supposed to happen. And that failure to audit the law is a failure to implement the constitution in the first place. And um, one novel thing about this constitution is it gives uh, our human rights uh, a very central place in all, the, or in all life, eh? in all uh, government dealings, in all interactions. And uh, these rights ranging from freedom of expression, which actually allows you to access, exercise other rights because the right to seek, receive, and impart information is the right that ensures that you'll be able to say, nimefinua, that will enable you to hear that, the, the, that there's something that is happening there and you're entitled to something. There is no um, public participation without freedom of expression. You understand? Mm -hmm. And so um, seeing the importance of freedom of expression, freedom of expression is the only right that has been self-limited under the constitution. Where in article 33, uh, two, it says that everyone has the right to seek, receive and impart information, except when they're dealing with hate speech, uh, propaganda for hate, incitement to violence, uh, uh, and advocacy for hatred. And um, so, um, it, uh, so you find that many laws right now that are being implemented, the new ones under the Cybercrimes Act, uh, 
Uh, there's one law right now that makes it illegal to, to have pornographic material. And then you wonder what, what is pornographic material in the first place? What if someone sent it to you? And these populist laws that are coming up are really supposed uh, to ensure that people are not able to, to caucus together, to exchange information. And uh, for example, someone like Mutemi, Mutemi, what he went through, it's because of the Cyber Crimes, uh, Cyber Crimes Act, which actually brought back uh, criminal defamation that had been successfully uh, litigated by some people like us, where the court said that you cannot, um, you cannot arrest a person, take them to court and under the pain of criminal sanction for talking about someone else, right? And if someone else is not um, happy with what I said, they can take me to civil court. You understand? The police and the government have no business interfering with what Kenyans are talking about unless those Kenyans have gone to that, the extent of advocacy for hatred, incitement to violence. And incitement to violence is, is, is actually a technical term which means that what, what you are saying uh, is very likely going to inspire someone to attack another person. And you have to really identify that other person by, by tribe and, and so on and so forth. Um, and so the, the constitution that we have right now is was almost ingenious in terms of how it, it dictated that if you want to limit human rights, you have to meet certain things. And this is Article 24 of the Constitution that says that for you to limit any right, first of all, the person who wants to limit must justify why they're trying to limit that right, right, for example. And then it says that any law that limits a right must be clear and concise, right? It can't be vague. Let me give you an, exa an example of a law that was vague and was being used to harass people. Um, it was called um, misuse of a licensed telecommunication device, also used against bloggers mostly, uh, which said that if you send a message that causes anxiety, yeah, <laughs> causes anxiety. What is what is causes anxiety, right? Uh, and it went on to uh, list other things like that. And when that was challenged in court, it was found to be unconstitutional because it's not clear and concise. So no one knows where it begins and where it ends. Another thing is that that law must be necessary and proportionate in an open and democratic society. Do you want to use a hammer to kill a fly? Under our constitution, you can't do that, right? It has to be a very uh, precise like surgery, right? And uh, the third one is that it has to uh, pursue a legitimate aim. So think about all these things that are going, uh, going on in Kenya. Any limitation to our ability to meet, to protest, uh, to walk at night, you understand, have to meet all those thresholds. We are having a conundrum right now where we are not being allowed to assemble, especially human rights defenders, especially ordinary members of society. We are not being allowed to come together to talk about anything, yet, um, that is being done by the people in power or the people who are powerful. So when today, if I want to organize 13 people to talk about something in the streets, we will be arrested and beaten in, that, in the process, yet our political leaders can assemble hundreds or even can do those impromptu ones where they go to, the, to, to a town and, and then do those loudspeaker things, people come and nothing happens. And that violates one tenet of, of constitutionalism and human rights, which is equality before the law. You can have the rule of law, yes, but as long as that law is not being, um, being applied equally, it means that there's a violation to all laws and everyone in the country. And so I think that's the next step, that next step we need to go to demand equality before the law. Uh, um, the BBI case was fast tracked uh, in the Court of Appeal. Mm. The Willy Kimani case is still going on. How many years later? Huh? And all the evidence is there. In fact, one of the cops is going to be charged with another murder, okay. right? So there's really, uh, there, we really, uh, as much as we've made uh, certain strides, there's a lot that needs to be done and a lot must be done by professionals, by ordinary Kenyans, which we said is not a good one. Yeah. <laughs> or the average Kenyan, yeah. But uh, yeah, so I am I am optimistic, uh, but cautiously optimistic 
What I'm seeing right now as we head towards an election where clearly the police are being partisan, uh, where, uh, um, where the, certain elements of the judiciary are being, are being attacked, uh, where uh, people cannot, um, cannot um, assemble properly. Those are the ingredients that lead to uh, uh, unfair political contests that lead to contestation of the results that lead to violence as we saw in 2007 and the subsequent reports that we got from 2007 that actually inspired this constitution. Because if you look at the reforms that were, uh, were in the uh, CPEV report, CPEV is a commission on inquiry on post-election violence, the working report. If you look at the, um, the recommendations that were in the Krigler report on elections, if you look at the recommendations in the Philip Ransley report on policy, are the ones that made it into the constitution, but they are the very ones that we are ignoring right now. Thank you. Hmm. Yes. I have a quick question. It's a quick question. Uh -huh. For both you and Elena. Uh -huh. You know, as, as we are all talking about public participation, I'm just wondering where is. Uh, Oh, sorry, uh, I'm just wondering where is uh, room for influencing quality public participation because um, away from showing up physically, like can we participate virtually or something? And I'm saying that because now that I'm in the NGO space, I'm able to participate and show up. But initially I was employed. And I remember even the days I would ask for off, like in Esabiwa Kwa Live Deako. Now Sazingina, you've seen that public participation thing a day two. And some even some counties even publish these things one day too, as in honestly you want to, but if that one day is going to compromise your livelihoods, you won't go. If that one day is going to make me lose my job just because I want to go and participate, I won't go because if if your own colleagues and boss do not understand the need and the importance of public participation. But you see, if I could participate virtually, I don't need to compromise and start asking for off days, leave days, and start feeling like, oh my God, if I have to participate four times a year, I lose my job. Because if they start branding me an activist and I'm working for them, I might lose my job. So I think also there's, uh, I think we miss out uh, in terms of how public participation is organized. I feel like it's flawed in so many ways, but I'm just wondering what we can do about it. Uh, thanks, Bina. I think to answer your question, we submitted recommendations to the Senate when they were doing the second bill reading for public participation, the second reading, and we suggested uh, social media. And you can imagine what happened. Do you want to guess? You want to guess? Ah, they laughed at us. <laughs> they laughed. They laughed, uh, they said, this is impossible. Why would you make such a recommendation? It's foolish. But also it was done in a time that was before COVID. I think if we were to push for something like that now, it would be a little bit more receptive just because people have seen how difficult it has been even for them to work. Because what I've begun to see is county governments have taken advantage of that gap. So there's no public participation at all. Yeah, because now they are saying there are no meetings. We cannot have the meetings COVID. So when our petition is easy to, and it's concerning for our work. So I think that it's something that we need to bring up again. But also I feel like I'm, I'm diving into my response because I was going to talk about the fact, um, just to hear what Mutemi was talking about, how the constitution has almost, in, it not almost, was intentionally developed to fail. And I see it systemically, yeah? So my work is with youth all the time everywhere. And even if you look at the systems of youth, youth is not devolved. Guys, youth is not devolved. How come? And youth are everywhere. It makes no bloody hell sense. But even when you look at the offices that interact with youth, it's at the national mainly, then you have the ministry, you have the director of youth affairs. There are so many different offices that if you are to ask a young person, even the National Youth Council itself, we're not even going to dive in. It is completely weak <laughs> and it's a mess, frankly speaking. 
So when you think about it that way, then the youth are not supposed to organize. They are not supposed to understand. They are not supposed to be taught. So it becomes a challenge when, even when we're talking about the constitution, young people having the responsibility, but how do they even get to it? The system has been created to where we're so busy surviving that ata kuingia kusoma hiyo katiba. Ay, by the way, <laughs> you need to pat yourself on the back. Ata kama umesoma. You know you have pushed yourself and you have decided, by the way, I want to do this, I'm doing this. And, and that's something that we have to also recognize. So we are facing all those challenges to do. But Bina says something so important and she talks about it so passionately with student leaders and university leadership. And so even today, 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 Grace uh, on my team asked if we can support a young lady who comes to our office and works for us sometimes because she's interested in a position at Took. Took is having the elections on Wednesday. So I agreed. I said, let's support her campaign. But normally, this is something, yeah, thank you. This is something that I wouldn't think about. But now I'm beginning to see, we do need to encourage young people. We do need to encourage women. But also, guys, the politics, the politics, Tanayi campaign finance, the IBC caps are ridiculous. Yeah. And people do not have that money. Let's be honest. If we're talking about character, people with character don't have that money. Exactly. <laughs> people with character are poor, 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 maskini kabisa. So how are we going to enter this race that is for the rich? That is just plain and simple. So until we begin to fight how much people spend on campaigns, oh, we do a totally different campaign. You eat that money and you vote someone else. Until we, be, we decide as a people what to do that money, we are going to be stuck with having people that we don't want in positions of leadership and then completely messing us up because things are going to get worse. I truly honestly believe. And so those are some of the things that I feel we, we need to talk about and we need to engage before we can even say, at what point do youth interact with the constitution? And even say, at what point do they enter politics? Because just the other day we were in a meeting with Bina and, and someone was sharing with us how they had um, four levels of security for a meeting, surely. That means you have four types of goons, surely. Eh? When you want to magan, the other ones without uniform. Eh? When people are spending a milli on security for two hours, that's one meeting. Now you have to campaign for how many months? For how many days? That's money. Eh? So we need to think. We have to change this game. We can't say young people enter politics and that's the game they have. It cannot work. But yeah, I don't even know my <laughs> just, just to add one thing huh, okay. about uh, that, that very good question about uh, what do I do when I want to participate, uh, but I am employed and so on and so forth. I, I think it's, it's, it's important to join uh, a social justice center around where you live. Uh, an association, it's, it's, it's important to have another layer of representation that is not necessarily you. Uh, for example, if, it's, if lawyers would have an issue, you'd really expect that LSK would probably deal with, with whatever their concerns are in, in, in the public participation. But now we should have um, like association based on areas, based on interests that will allow you to sit pretty at home, but you know that you articulated. But know that whatever your, your aspirations are, have been captured by those people and, they will, and they're the ones who will go. And, um, and, uh, and that's why the freedom of association 
is very important um, in all political processes. On, on this issue of um, public participation, um, CD, CD spoke about the fact that the, the constitution has not uh, been implemented fully, especially devolving power to the village, the village council. But one government, I think one government, I don't know that there's any other, but I do know one government, one county government has done this. Uh, the Makueni County government. Um, and they've gone beyond the call. I've been mean, beyond, beyond um, how decisions are made there in Makueni should be a study for a lot of us um, because it starts from the village. It does not start from the county government or county assembly. So if, uh, let's say, this village, we need a school, we need a road, uh, we need a cattle dip. We meet and we agree which of those is a priority. So we say, I think this year, that's the Pesa Eco budget to find a cattle dip. Then you call the CEC, the response, okay, the ward administrator, and then they bring in the CEC responsible for for that, that particular project that you decided. And um, together you design a bid and uh, people bid for that project. And it's the villagers who will approve, who decide who will build that cattle deal. And then all the county government does is facilitate, uh, make sure that the money is there, make sure that the project is there. I mean, do whatever governments do. And then the villagers supervise the project. So there's, ownership, they own that project. They own the county government, they own the money that comes to that county. And I think that's what we'd like to see um, in terms of public participation all over the country, whereby that is real public participation. In a lot of spaces, people just call, I, uh, I come, I, 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 let's say I'm, a, an M, I'm an MCO or a CC. I call my friends to a room, 20 of them, and then I have them sign that they participated, I give them Kidogo, and then that is, we call that public participation. As you're talking about, uh, I think it was mentioned in the High Court, or in the Court of Appeal, uh, Tana River, where they advertised for public participation around BBI, but passed the bill a day before the, 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 the public participation was supposed to happen. So I think we need to demand these things from our, our leaders. And I was, um, um, I was surprised that these are uh, people in the advocacy space when uh, Bina asked that question of how many have read Article 43? Because everything that you do in the advocacy space is actually based on Article 43. The right to food, the right to health, right to education, right to what uh, security, sanitation, housing, etc. All those, that's, those are Article 43 rights. Um, so it's important that um, um, we make, we read this constitution. If you have a smartphone, there's no reason why you should not have that app. And that app is offline. Once you download it, the constitution is in your phone. You don't need data to access it. So let's, let's make it a responsibility as Sidi talked about. It gives you rights, freedoms, but people don't talk about responsibilities. As a citizen, you have responsibilities. Um, and that's why I'm an activist. Um, that's my responsibility as a, as a citizen, um, to be an active citizen and to speak truth to power with love. Um, and uh, the fact that I speak truth to power is why I get arrested. Because um, uh, the people in power don't want to hear that truth. You know? Interestingly, like the, the poster that I was arrested for, I don't even know who created it. I just tweeted it, you know, and I didn't care who, who, who whatever, because I have a following, it, it went viral and uh, someone panicked in the office of the president and said, Kabila Uru Auliza, what you to shake It was uh, it was uh, back in it. So they can at least, they can say we took some action because what happened with that poster and the, there was a petition that was running at the same time. They went viral, 
and they went to international media. And for the first time, because this Jubilee had been very good at creating an impression, uh, handling PR, especially internationally, so they could continue borrowing. And so this is the first time that even the Bloomberg and other financial uh, um, you know, uh, media organizations picked up that conversation that Kenya is over borrowing, Kenya is, uh, is broke, the IMF has put in conditions, and Uhuru got so angry that I hear he picked up a seat and threw it against the wall. And so my arrest was supposed to, I guess, mitigate and show him that some people are doing something. Um, but I you know that's, that's, that's um, it shows the power of us speaking, us asking questions, us not just being quiet, being active citizens. The fact that a tweet can get the president, can get the entire machinery of government to come for me, shows you the power we have. So let's, let's have more Mutemis out there. Let's have more Mutemis. Let's speak out. Let's ask these questions. Thank you very much, Mutemi. I think I'll, I'll give Dimas to close. Uh, give us your reflections as Mufasa prepares himself on I hear it has changed from we the people to we the politicians. <laughs> <laughs> and we are being told that we have a constitutional crisis and we need change. But what we have is a power crisis, yeah. a political crisis, that we need to actually change the constitution to accommodate the political crisis. So what are your thoughts of the shift from we the people to we the politicians of Kenya? <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't say that. You know, on paper, it is we the people, but there was a, there was a very elaborate plan to change it back to we the politicians. And it was very insidious because it involved almost all the political players. Huh? And that's why they keep uh, meeting in, in certain uh, conferences because as a group, because it, 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 is, it is decided by them that we are going into this thing together and we are going to reclaim this country and for themselves right, and control it by themselves. But as Motemi says, uh, the courts really, really stood up for us. Um, yeah, because some of us were not very confident about the Court of Appeal, right? Uh, even if I do the numbers about the Supreme Court, I can't be that arrogant, but it will, it, 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 it will take a lot of somersaults to undo the very strong judgment that uh, was written by the High Court that really uh, reasserted that you cannot just play around with us. You might have done it in 1966 when you removed the when you removed the regional governments, when you removed the Senate. 1975, when you decided to change the constitution in order for you to pardon your friend uh, for electoral mal malpractices. 1982, when you guys just decided that multipartism multi is too much, this, this country just needs one party. And everything you wanted to do, you had to, bend down to the will of Khan for you to articulate yourself. And it's only when Kenyans started standing up for themselves that we saw the repeal of section 2A in 1992, the reforms of 1997 after IPPG, the rejection of uh, the constitution in 205 where the same players decided to go and edit the BOMAS draft for themselves and now pre present, it to, pre present it to us as a, as a document to be taken to a referendum and we said no. And uh, it's, it is now when you look at our history that you realize that those judges lo looked at this thing holistically. They looked at it from when this idea called Kenya was born, from when we, we started um, exercising sovereign power and how through legal processes, the political class always had its way. And right now they, they have, obviously they've met, obviously they've regrouped, but the challenge that we gave ourselves in the 2010 constitution, it's very hard to play with it so much fundamentally. 
and we thank uh, we thank God for that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope we have learned something and we are charged and powered. I like what Bina said, and I think most of the time we we don't really internalize the fact that the law decides so much about what we do uh, that we don't really translate what these leaders, what this constitution mean to our daily, daily life. Yesterday, my cleaning lady was telling me, Uko kwa soko hakuna hata spinach, hakuna hata mboga, hakuna hata mboga, ile kambeji nimepata ni ya 50 bob. So you can imagine two adults and uh, two, two children under, under 15 are being fed with cabbage, more than 50 bob, one meal. And that cabbage is not the only thing they are eating. Mm -hmm. So how much money do people in informal settlements earn a day? Na kama yo cabbage, more than 50 bob, nunua kitungu, even boil it, nunua unga. Mafuta imepanda bei. Yeah, so how do you, yeah, so how are you going to, 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 to survive? Uh, people cannot even afford internet anymore or airtime. You cannot be able to organize uh, on platforms because you will need to first buy airtime, then buy bundles, and you cannot even afford food. So when you have to look at, do I buy food or do I buy bundles and get into, into a group? So it's a very difficult balance. I hear them say internet connectivity is X percentage in Kenya, but what about internet affordability? Mm. So it may be accessible, but can we afford it? Unga may be there, but can we afford Unga? And with all this whole drama of aflatoxins, I don't know if you have seen the, the route to food uh, project. Anybody you're part of that project? Yes, the route to food. That food security is not just about having enough food, it is about also us having safe food. There was a documentary by John Alanamu about how meat, nyama, in a treaty wa kutoka kwa shelf, ndiyo muikule siku tatu, it is in the supermarket, uh, what do they call them? Yeah, so ndiyo kwenye shelf life mrefu. Ndiyo yo nyama ukienda Saturday, utaipata ikiwa fresh, lakini ni ya Monday. <laughs> so what does that mean to your body? Dimas here, they run chanjo kwa water, kwa water at Amnesty. And they keep asking, okay, yeah, we want to be vaccinated. But we want to know why we are being vaccinated and what is in the vaccine and how it affects our body. We want to have free prior and informed consent to say, Ninaenda kuchanjwa, because this is how it benefits my body. I have I've seen... I, and I'm not saying this has happened because I cannot verify. Someone says, I cannot lift my arm. So me, when I see that, I'll be like, eh. <laughs> 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 I'm in a group where someone asked, do we have a pregnant woman when you're metanjoa, quite a group, like someone we can relate to. At one what happened after metanjoa? Hakuna. So people are like, okay, so what will happen if and I'm pregnant? You see the right to information. And I, I, I keep, I feel like this is the time that the right to information should be prioritized. We need to know so much that we are not allowed to know. We need to ask questions that we normally don't ask. So thank you so, so much for coming. Uh, so we will get a presentation from Mufasa. After that, one by one, you will enter this door. <laughs> I'll give you something for your transport so that we can leave. Otherwise, thank you very much. I've really enjoyed being in your midst. Thank you for your notes again. <laughs> Have you seen it? Have you seen your notes? Have you seen your notes?
Sigur, băi, nu-ți bucă. Let's give Mufasa attention. My boys are dying. Some of them are poets. They have written a thousand poems, but not one has earned them a living. Open mics, don't open the door when the landlord closes your house. My boys are dying. Some of them are singers. You may or may not have heard their songs before, but every mealtime they eat their own songs and chalk on their lyrics. My boys are dying. Don't let those Nike shoes fool you. There's nothing correct about the heart of a young man who has nothing but his Nike shoes. My boys are dying for being misunderstood. Understand that my boys will do anything for money. My boys are dying because the universe has refused to accept them as stars. Now they are earthbound, bound to be art, art is soil, soil is sometimes called dirt. My boys are dirty. My boys are dying from working in seawalls and garbage points without proper gear. Their family fears, but it's what steers are leaving, believing tomorrow will come, but the day is leaving. My boys are dying from taking care of families they don't feel taken care of. My boys are dying from bullet wounds. My boys are dying for being boys, for being big boys, for being just boys, for being bass boys, for being in a group of boys. My boys are dying before their fathers. My boys are dying because their fathers. My boys are dying to go father. They've got bomb lyrics to bomb your TV, check the temperatures. They are walking degrees. Their mind is a state of art. The state has refused to stage outside. My boys are dying inside. Ask the jail warden. My boys are dying from building those wounds from intestinal wounds. My boys are dying outside. My boys are dying because our leaders are clashing. My boys are dying because our leaders are lying. My boys are dying because integrity is dying. My boys are dying because they have nothing to go back to. I know boys my age in the streets going back to back, blaming a whole country for not having their back. My boys are dying because they lost hope. My boys are dying because their mind is at war. My boys are dying and all our local leaders keep doing is lying, 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 to fly, rush to Dubai. I wonder what to buy while my boys cannot afford a bath. Back home, my boys are dying. And I don't know if we are ready to save them. My boy, you're gonna die, Sindio. Sindio, when I join in a semicana, Kukua took my mimi when he suspect. Sindio, say in a bit to buy a coati, at least you Ukidunga, Ukidunga ragged, Unaza Jipata Kongori, Sindio. But, uh, Eh? <laughs> yeah. 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 But for me, I think the suggestion that I will have personally come on Elmo is to have this conversation more. The more to Tongia, when I do what will you a few days and then tukaanza kusikia sasa sasa hivi wanaongea about the president na venye wanapigana sio we have to continue talking about it eh the the criminalizing eh of dreadlocks and uh sio we have to continue that conversation because then that is the only way we'll be able to sort it out sasa and for now i want to welcome uh the the person who is closing it out uh so i'll call bill ha so this song is part of something that we're doing back at home. It's part of a project we call it Sautizamta and talking strongly about the same thing that we, I'm just talking about. Sindio. And she's saying to Nakata. So let's give it up for Bill Hashi performing this track. And the song is all about um, police brutality, injustice, na vile wasewa na harasiwa, and also ku like, ku lesa maji, what's the word? Like, to put it for the youth, like, wa, 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 to give players in, we get to know more about our, name, our rights. Yes. Come on.
Pakistani mseto hapa ghetto Polisi na kafimbo ni msako Tige picha yote kwenye nango Eka kwenye mtandao God is especially Wakitai tu mkwanja mi Na ini kwenye pochi mi Salala kwenye seli mi Hao, hao, hao Wana jidai hao ndiyo wenye inchi Waliwa ule binti Cause kesi kakura uko juzi Tunakata, tunakata Tunakata, tunakata Kuwa victim Kuwa polisi Tunakata, tunakata Tunakata, tunakata Tunakata, kuwa victim Kuwa polisi Na bunyenye wa mtana Polisi wako kwenye nambo moja Kunyanya za wananchi Nyumba imengusho juzi Na walafi wa mita ofisi Kwa sababu wana wingi senti Na cheti Kesi kwenye koti miaka thati Zazi itakuna siyo hati Hao, hao, hao Unatijai hao ndiyo wenye inchi Waliuwa ule binti Kuzi kesi ya kura uwe juzi Tunakata, tunakata Tunakata, tunakata Kuwa binti Kwa poli nisi Tunakata, tunakata Tunakata, tunakata Kuwa binti Kwa poli nisi Yeah, so uh, I think this is a time we call it uh, an evening, you know, but at the conversation about the Katiba and the Constitution, you know, uh, isn't it? the same thing, you know, like so conversation ya Katiba in a one thing, I think one thing that is very important, me, we have this conversation area. Sindio, nilikuwa nasema ile 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 muradi ile muradi ya Gengeton ilikuwa muradi mzuri sana ya ku bring hizi vitu hapo ndani ndio so because basically it was one space that they were talking about anything and everything ndio they are well, see nikai waliacha they are still continuing so that space being if that space can be able to be created to talk about it, whatever Gengeton talks about it's very possible to have this conversation on all these spaces sasa so, uh, Jackie, tunamaliza na wewe ama nimalize peke yangu. <laughs> so, thank you so much for tonight. Uh, ni tonight, isha kwa tonight. Eh, hey. hey. tulianza hapa evening, tulianza evening, lakini sahi nisha anza kusema tonight. So, thank you so much. I uh, uh, appreciate Buni Media. Everyone from Madhare, naona wasewa Madhare ya pandani. Pige nduru kwa watu wa Madhare. Yeah. Yeah. Eh, pige pia naona watu wa mukuru wako area in the house. Naona kuna watu wa Kibera na waona. Kuna watu wa Lavington, nani wa Lavington? Tuasikie watu wa Kikuyu na watu wa Kangemi, si ndio? Eh. Yeah, wacha nitaje tu wale naona siasa place represented by Nerima, si ndio? Unajua Nerima na Nelmo, tunafaa tufanye collab. Zina karibiana. Uh, please. Watu wa Kasarani. Yes, yeah, sindio. By the way, Kasarani impressed us. Sindio. She remember what happened in Kasarani. Ama mesa how? How dare you forget that soon? Can't remember eh, the revolution we talked about ile ili happen Kasarani until barabara ikatengenezwa. Muna sa how? Hey, and it was all over the media. Eh? Eh, sindio? Those are some of the things we should talk about. That change is possible, sindio? Um, kama nime kusahau pole, ni venye sijui mali umetoka, lakini I appreciate everyone who has come today, sindio? Uh, Buni Media for making this possible. Uh, Buni Media part of the XYZ team, sindio? Uh, natafuta ama kuna mtu nime sahau. Lakini kama nime kusahau, sina ubaya. Uh, I just say thank you. Uh, I'm Nel Monisong. And uh, you had Jackie and the panelists before, and thank you so much.
have a, have a awesome weekend.